Good afternoon and welcome again to all of you from the UFJCs and welcome President Gary Wilkinson. Before we start, let me also recognize some congressional members and also friends from the great state of Mississippi. From the House, Trent Lott and Sonny Montgomery. In the Senate, John Stennis and Thad Cochran. You know, I shouldn't take advantage of them here in a situation of this kind with regard to partisan politics or anything. <laughs> but I'll bet they'd make the most of it if I said you realize that in this room behind me here is the Nobel Peace Prize that was won or awarded to the family of Teddy Roosevelt. And that was for ending the Japanese, the Russo Japanese War. And he did it in typical Republican style. He was sitting on a yacht. <laughs> Turn that against me. But we're here, here today to talk about the JCs. I'm well aware of what each of you individually and your organization as a whole has accomplished, and I thank you. Before you leave, let me tell you about two additional things that I think are important. I have to get in a lick for this. One is the confirmation of Judge Robert Bork to the Supreme Court. As you may be aware, his hearings start tomorrow in the Senate Judiciary Committee. And I must tell you, I feel strongly that no man in America and few in history has been more qualified to sit on the Supreme Court than Bob Bork. I mention this because I think he deserves to be evaluated on his qualifications, and he deserves to be considered promptly, and I hope you'll join me in supporting him that's why I happen to bring this up. I know what the many areas and the fields and what you can accomplish, and I wasn't going to let an opportunity like this go by. <laughs> now, the second one is our policy toward Nicaragua. There should be no confusion. We support two tracks, diplomatic initiatives for peace, and democracy, and the other track is the freedom fighters. They're mutually reinforcing since military pressure has brought the Sandinistas for the first time to the negotiating table. And I think we would suffer a quick defeat on those negotiations if we removed precipitously by simply neglecting them the support of those freedom fighters who have been the pressure that brought this about. And we will not abandon them. Now, I said all that I was going to say to all of you, and I know you have other things to do, but I just came from speaking to the National Business Association, and I couldn't help but, in connection with the way things are sometimes here in Washington, of telling them a little story, and I'm going to tell it to you, and then that's going to be all. A fellow knocked on another man's door, and a man came to the door, and he said, uh, do you happen to own a black uh, pit bull? And the man said, well, yes, I do. Well, he said, I think I ought to tell you, he's dead. <clears throat> the man said, dead? He said, how, how did that happen? Well, he said, my Pekingese killed him. <laughs> he says, your Pekingese killed him? How? He says, got stuck in his throat. <laughs> You know, that's a major part of our organization, the leadership. And you've been the example to follow. And I, I, I will say this, if you can't believe in family and freedom, free enterprise, and Ronald Reagan, I don't think you can believe in America. On behalf of the United States AC, I'd like to present a token of our appreciation for your leadership that we follow, President Reagan. 